Good evening, everybody. My name is Dermot Diamond. I'm a professor of chemistry at DCU. I've been there for 31 years. It feels like 301. Anyway, so a little bit about my background. So I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm a, chem I'm a chemistry freak. But I wasn't always a chemistry freak. I was, I was quite normal until I was about 12. And I was playing hurling in what's called the Belfast Summer League, and I got split open with a hurling stick. I was taken to the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast. I got 14 stitches, and when I woke up, I thought, I'm gonna do chemistry. <laughs> but up until then, I was, I was quite normal. <clears throat> so I, I went head over heels into chemistry, and uh, I went to university during the 1970s and the 1980s, but in the 1970s, let me take you back to Belfast in the 1970s. You know, we've got a lot of stuff about Brexit at the minute. We do not want to go back to Belfast in the 1970s. The streets were gray. It was always raining. Someone would burn a bus. The buses are off. I had to get from Anderson's Town down the Falls Road, out to Queen's University, past Sandy Row and you'd be walking along this dark gray street with the drizzle coming down, and nobody else. Streets totally deserted. Just the soft sound of your footprints as you look around, watching for a car, having your escape route ready to run as fast as your wee legs would carry you, to get away. And then you see a man coming the other way similarly dressed in a shabby coat like me. I'm heading one way, he's coming the other. You think maybe I'll cross, I'll go across the other side of the road. No, he goes over and then you come, you come back. <laughs> oh, he does, does he look? Don't catch eye contact, there are rules. You know, don't look, but you have to look. So you do what we call <laughs> juking, you juke. Little juke. He looks okay, He's, he doesn't look strange. There's nothing strange about him. And you pass by and you go, well, let's get up to the lab and do some work. And I, uh, let me take you back then. You know, this is, this is the, at the time when dinosaurs ruled the earth. <laughs> there were no mobile phones, no laptops, no computers. And we had to do things like capturing signals from electrodes. Dynamics, and dynamic response. Do you know how we did it? You set up an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope had no memory. So how do you capture the trace on the oscilloscope? You get a camera. You put it on a stand. You take a photograph of the screen. And because we're in a chemistry department, we've got a developing room where you can develop your black and white photographs of your oscilloscope screen. So about a week after you do the experiment, <laughs> you realize you hadn't got the focus right on the camera. <laughs> oh God, okay, let's do it again. <laughs> so that's what I was doing back in those days. And then I started working with these compounds called calixarines. Calixarines are the most beautiful molecules you could think of. They have this really unruly top part of the molecule full of um, lipophilic groups. That's a bit like greasy hair sticking up. And then it comes into this most beautiful waste, a little tiny waste called an annulus. The bells of the annulus. <laughs> and four beautiful legs, pendant legs, with a delta negative charged cavity defined by these four legs. Can you imagine it? These legs dangling with that little negative cavity, waiting for a positive ion to come. It's a bit like the previous talk, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So we, we were working with these, these beautiful compounds and they were used in superglue. They are the mysterious secret of superglue. You know that's made by Loctite? The Loctite Corporation, it's not Hankel and Tala, fantastic company. And Loctite um, 
used these collectorines because they were very good at gathering up sodium ions. And sodium ions are everywhere. They contaminate everything and they set off the glue. So you go to get the glue in the shop, it seems okay. You put it on the shelf in the house and you go to use it and it's turned hard. So super glue wasn't very super when it first came out. And then the collectorine solved the problem. And we started using these because we reckon we could make chemical sensors with them. And they were fantastic in the chemical sensors, and that's what I discovered. But I was working with Loctite quite a lot, and there's a story I tell about going down the corridor. Now, this is way, way back before mobile phones, and the secretary came out of the office, and she said, there's a phone call from you, or for you in the office. And I said, is it Loctite? And she said, no, the door's open. <laughs> and, so... Uh, I'd also got my street cred in Belfast because um, there was a trick that I did one time. Kelly Sellers, have you ever been to Kelly Sellers? Lovely old pub in the middle of Belfast. And the, we had a, a guy who worked behind the bar. We called him Billy Wiz. And Billy would run around. You, you wouldn't actually see him running. He was so fast, you'd get a breath of air. <laughs> and he would clear the table, and you wouldn't even see him. That little inch of Guinness that you were... You were waiting to finish, gone. <laughs> so we were deciding we'd have to do something about Billy Wiz and my street cred, I said, super glue. So I super glued a bottle, an empty bottle to the table. Billy came flying past, grabbed the bottle, overwent the table, <laughs> including the remnants of a few drinks. I went to the bar, four pints of Guinness, please. Um, three black bush, and a Scandinavian. You know what a Scandinavian is in Belfast? A Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, and then I bring them down. Everybody thought this is great. I, I got rid of Billy Wiz. I got us free drinks. Uh, my cre street cred was way up. So then the night when I was doing the big experiment, when I discovered the this, this sensor um, behavior of, of these calixerines. I had borrowed, I got rid of the camera, I borrowed a chart recorder. You know what a chart recorder is? You know the paper that goes along and it's got a little pen, and the pen goes, you know when Los Angeles is gonna have a, an earthquake? <laughs> you know that thing? So I got one of those, but they had a little fine nib on this, but a little barrel, it was a repeatograph uh, nib, and a, and a little reservoir of red ink. And the damn things kept blocking. That little barrel kept... So I had a piece of wire I would keep pushing into it to keep, to keep the red ink coming out. And I'd set up the chart recorder, and I had my beakers there with my sample solutions, and I was going to spike in. When you spike in with the sensor, you get this transient response, you see? But the bloody thing kept blocking, and I would keep lifting it off. Of course, every time you lift it off, you spill red ink over yourself. You know, this on your hands, and then, of course, you're rubbing it on your face. It's all over your white... Your white coat is now a red coat, and you're starting to look like an extra from the living dead, you know, <laughs> wandering around. And because this was at night, I did my PhD part-time. There was nobody else in the building except me. I was a little bit mad. And I screened all those ions. I... I I put in potassium, potassium chloride, scooted it in, and the clicktrain sitting there in the sensor, and along come the potassium ions, and the goes, no, you're too big, go away, go away. Nothing happens. Wonderful. I injected in the lithium chloride, and the clicktrains are waiting in. He said, no, you're too small, you're far too small, go away, I'm not interested in you. And then I put in the sodium. And I just heard the whoosh of the pen going and the beautiful curve. And I knew the PhD is in the back because those sodium ions, <laughs> those sodium ions are going into that little negative cavity and pop, pop, pop. And it was in the bag. Now, what do you do when you, when you, when you, just, you know you've made a profound discovery? And by the way, when you go to hospital and you give them, you get your bloods done, the sodium answer you get is produced by this molecule. It was, it was adopted by industry. I never got any money, that's why I'm standing here. <laughs> but just to finish off and t tell you, the thing you do when you discover something profound is you turn to the person beside you and say, look, there's nobody there. So 
I, I sort of did a little dance around the room, you know, and nobody, I ran out into the corridor, nobody there, nobody there, down out through the foyer of the Keir building onto the Strandmillis Road, and I looked up the street, and there was a little man coming towards me, <laughs> and I went towards him, and he looked at me, and he turned, and he ran. <laughs> And the rest, you might say, is history. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>